It's not your fault you can't pay attention. Your attention didn't collapse. Your attention has been stolen from you by some very big and powerful forces. But once we understand what those forces are, we can begin to get our attention back again. Think about anything you've ever achieved in your life that you're proud of, whether it's starting a business, being a good parent, learning to play the guitar, whatever that thing you're proud of is, it required a huge amount of sustained focus and attention. And the evidence is very clear. When your ability to pay attention breaks down, your ability to achieve your goals breaks down. I wrote my book, Stolen Focus, because I noticed that with each year that passed, my own ability to focus and pay attention was just getting worse and worse. You know, I realized that things that I love that are so important to me, like reading books, watching films, having proper long conversations, were getting more and more like running up a down escalator. I could still do them, but they were getting harder and harder. And I could see this was happening to huge numbers of people around me. Getting our attention back is the single most important thing we can do to achieve all our other goals. In the process of writing my book, Stolen Focus, I went to MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to interview one of the leading neuroscientists in the world, an amazing man named Professor Earl Miller. And he said to me, there's one thing you've got to understand about the human brain. You can only consciously think about one or two things at a time. That's it. But what's happened is we've fallen for a kind of mass delusion. You're not doing more than one thing at a time. What you're doing is you're juggling very quickly between tasks. And it turns out this juggling comes with a really big cost. The technical term for it is the switch cost effect. When you try and do more than one thing at a time, you do all the things you're trying to do much less competently. You make more mistakes. You remember less of what you do. You're much less creative. And I remember when I first learned that thinking, okay, I get it. But that's a small effect, right? Turns out it's a really big effect. This is one of the reasons why Professor Miller said to me, we are living in a perfect storm of cognitive degradation as a result of being constantly interrupted. We can all see that our children are really struggling to focus. When children play freely with other kids without an adult standing over them, they learn how to deal with anxiety. They take risks. You climb the tree, you get a bit too high, you get nervous, but you don't die. You find your way down. It's through facing these small challenges that children develop a sense of resilience and a sense that they are competent and can act in the world. We've taken that away from our children. By 2003, only 10% of American children ever played outside without an adult standing over them. And that has left our children terribly anxious and anxiety kills attention. We need to restore human childhood. We need to encourage kids to play outside, play with other children, and be apart from adults. To get our attention back, it requires a real change in psychology on our part. We need to stop blaming ourselves. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's not your kid's fault. And we need to make individual changes in our own lives. I'm passionately in favor of them. But also, we need to stop only asking for small changes. You don't get what you don't fight for. We're going to have to fight to get our attention back for ourselves as individuals, for our children, but most importantly, I think for our societies. Attention is our superpower as a species. It's the reason we've been so successful. If we lose our superpower at the moment of our greatest challenges, like the climate crisis, that's not gonna end well for us. We need to get our attention back so that we can deal with the urgent crises that face us now.